Uh, there is a ranking. Uh, you all right? Are you getting sick? <laughs> I feel like I'm losing you. Where? What's going on over there? I do have a little bit of the sniffles. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, you need some. Yeah, I need a little. Some I need some, cocaine. Yeah, I need something. <laughs> yeah, I just you know you get like that head pressure. Like oh that yeah, little like nasal. It's probably so. COVID. You're gonna die. You better get the jab. <laughs> COVID hasn't gotten me yet. I've kicked COVID. A lesser man. I've kicked COVID's ass twice. <laughs> you're gonna die this time, though. <laughs> third, Not unless you get 217 jabs. Third time's the charm. Yeah, I've only had what? like 140 at this point. No, I saw a list of uh, college football rankings, and it is the most explosive offenses of 2024. Even though we don't know what any of those offenses will be, well, we're just... this is the kind of content you have to put out in the off season. You know, it's like uh, yeah, like what we think the yeah, explosive offenses will be. With no yeah. basis for that opinion, none right. whatsoever. None. Half these teams, especially with the transfer portal, are entirely new. But Oregon was number two. That makes sense, and I thought that was interesting. Number one being Ohio State. Now that's the other fun thing about these lists. When it's like when your team's not on, it's like, oh, who cares? They don't know. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. It's like, hey, Oregon's too. Look at that. Right. Who the, and these are the types of lists that start to build expectations. Yes. Right. The who, fans pass these around. Well, so isn't it weird that I know Ohio State? Who did they get for their transfer quarterback? They got uh, Howard. Um, so they got Will Howard. The Will kid Howard from, from Kansas State. Yes. So Ohio State, whose offense was just god awful last year. Yeah, it was. And you got like. Will Howard, who's a dual threat guy, but doesn't throw the ball very much, and now I'm expecting Ohio State to have the best offense in the world. Although I know they got a lot in the transfer portal, but like Will Howard, really? yeah, this says this says they could be unstoppable. What you have? Okay, so you have Jeremiah Smith, who is a five star wide receiver, sure, who's coming in. You have Will Howard from Kansas State. They got running back, Ole Miss running back Quinshawn Judkins, that which they say he's good. Yeah, he's good. You uh, lose Harrison, but you also have uh, Egbuka coming back, mm -hmm. the wide receiver. So this says Buckeyes could be unstoppable if you insert Smith, the five-star freshman, rated as the 2024 cycle's top player overall in a talented wideout group, and Ohio State's not going to miss Harrison all that much on the outside. Because clearly five-star kids work out all the time. There's never any bus, and Will Howard is the answer. Figuring out the offensive line rotation and Chip Kelly's updated scheme is the main priority for Ryan Day. Anyway, they were number one. And Oregon was number two, and it just got me to thinking, you know, and I get why Oregon's number two. I mean, they cooked last year. I mean, mm -hmm. it was they were awesome. Will Stein's really good. Uh Tez Johnson's back. You've, you added the Evan Stewart kid from Texas A&M, wide receiver. Well, and Jordan James back, toting the rock. Yeah. Uh, Whitting, uh, Winnington will be back. Yeah. And Dylan Gabriel. I mean, he's probably the best quarterback out there. Yeah, Dylan Gabriel was number one or number two quarterback in the transfer portal. At one point during last season, four or five games in, he was a Heisman candidate. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah for sure. And, and is he's a good. And he's a proven guy. He's won everywhere so he's gone. my question, the only question I had with this was, is are we really just, are, are we really expecting... Uh, Gabriel to just slide in and do what Bo Nix did? Or is that a little bit of a slight to Bo Nix Boy, and how I, good he was? I think it's a little bit of a slight to Bo Nix. Um, I do. Because that dude was awesome. Bo Nix had two phenomenal years. And I've talked about this many a time. We do this in college football way too often, is we just get a case of the next man up. And the best example of this that I always bring up was like with USC. When USC was in their dominant run, it felt like every quarterback, every running back, every defensive end uh, was just, it was the next one. And they're like, well, th this guy's a five star kid. But eventually, you know, no offense to it, but you run into the John David Booties and you run into Joe McKnight. And Joe McKnight was fine. He played, he died, by the way, I think. I think he died recently. Um, but Joe McKnight was the number one player in the country. And what did we hear? He was the next Reggie Bush. Well, no, he wasn't. There never was another Reggie Bush. And and they didn't have an, another great quarterback for for a while at USC. He died eight years ago. Yeah, he died eight years ago. Yeah, I don't did he get robbed or I don't remember. It was He was killed in an apparent road rage accident. Yeah. I just I remember Damn. I remember Yeah, I think he got shot after a vehicular confrontation. So oh. when you look at, at Oregon's quarterbacks, it, it does feel like Oregon's quarterbacks just it's it's a little bit of plug and play. There's been so many good ones, but you know, there's also been some ones that you're like, eh, it's you know, it's not the not the best thing in the world. Dakota Prukop. Yeah. He was supposed to be like the savior and then it ended up not being the guy. So, you know, when I, I look at, at Dylan Gabriel, yeah, I, I would expect Dylan Gabriel in this offense to come in and roll. I do, but to say that he's going to, like, I mean, if if Bo Nix beats Washington in that last game, he wins the Heisman Trophy. That's the weird part is that, seriously, that game right there, that, that Pac-12 title game, that was the 
That was the, he wins that. They are in the college football playoff, and he wins the Heisman Trophy. So to say that Dylan Gabriel is going to come in with some new weapons and some receivers that are going to, and I know they've got what Casper back and Brian Jr., but you lose your best back in Bucky. Uh, you lose uh, a couple big linemen, including your best one in, in, in Powers Johnson. I mean, there is some people to replace there. It's not like everyone's back. And to say that he should win the Heisman Trophy or be one of the Heisman finalists, that is a tall, tall order. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a step back and say no, Bo Nix. But I I would be surprised if Dylan Gabriel struggles because he just doesn't. He's yeah. just he's a proven commodity. He's gonna be yeah, and he's experienced, like you said. And yeah, yeah, I just think he fits right in. But boy, I I don't know. Bo Nix was awfully yes, good. he was. It's and, hard to just keep expecting that every year. And the weird thing about Bo was, I remember when they brought him in. We all. Oh, yeah. And I was just as guilty as right. anyone else. It was like, it's a nice placeholder. The mm. collective reaction yeah. was met. Yeah. yeah. Then it was no like, doubt. it was like, cool. He gives you a veteran guy. He'll be the guy. And you, you can groom well, the, 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 you know, the, I the, the guess dog. you can use him if Ty Thompson doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like it was the idea of like you're waiting for the next, you know, the Dante Moore. And we'll say that about Dylan Gabriel, right? It's like Dylan Gabriel comes in and oh, uh, it's like you're just like, oh, it'll be good for one year and then Dante Moore takes over. Well, I don't know. Is Dante Moore going to take over? He didn't look good at UCLA. But your quarterback position next year for Oregon feels like one of the better ones in the country. Yeah, I sort of, sort of feel like they're kind of getting this pipeline now of every year getting a badass transfer quarterback that wants to go to Oregon after playing several years somewhere else. It feels like that's a lot of schools now. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the way it is now. Yeah. But Oregon's like, there's a pecking order with that. It used to be Lincoln Riley got all those guys, the yeah. top guys. Yep. Now, man, he still may, but now it, see, it seems like Oregon's like near the top of that. Yeah. For all, any any mm-hmm. any hot name that comes out on the, on the transfer portal as quarterback, Oregon seems to be like right up there now. Yeah. I would expect Oregon's offense next year to be very, very good. I mean, they're just you're at that level now where it feels like it's just a it should be. It's not a rebuild. It's just a it's, it's a reload. I, I would, if I'm an Oregon fan, I would like it more, you know, flying under the radar a bit. But this no. is what this is what yeah. comes with success. Like yeah. they're they're one of the top four or five teams in the country to in odds to win the college football playoff. Like they're really yeah. people people now know yeah. how good Oregon should be. And now you have to actually so you go live out. up to it. Well, now you have to go out and prove it. Yeah, because that's what Washington fan is going to say. Hey, you've been saying this for the last two years, and yeah. you can't beat us. So yeah. it's just, I just think it's a lot. It's a lot easier to play when nobody's really paying attention, and then sure. it's like, oh, look at those guys. Well, on the schedule next year, you know, it's there's some doozies on that bad boy. Michigan, there are, but not Michigan, as Ohio State, not as many as you think. I mean, Michigan, you get a break there. Harbaugh's out. Yeah. Ohio State, you get it home. Other than that, you got what was Wisconsin. I think they have to go to Wisconsin. Wisconsin, Washington, <clears throat> and we yeah, we're not certain. And then Washington, we're not like, certain what Washington's going to have because Washington's the one like that's what I mean. Washington lost a lot. Well, think about if they played their schedule for next year this year yeah you're playing three of the best you're playing three of the top five teams in the country yes whereas this you, you do get like and, and we and then oregon state was really good and michigan new quarterback you said no harbaugh all that stuff and they yeah. sent like what 18 guys to the combine so you know maybe michigan isn't what uh you know michigan may, may take a big step backwards hey can i give you a joe mcknight follow-up yeah what do we got coming up next how many years did the guy who shot him serve Oh, okay. Can I guess not enough. Yeah. It's 550.